all the churches in Macedonia, there was a special kind of grace that God himself released upon them. Hallelujah. Why? Because giving is a grace. Praise God. Giving is an ability. To give, you have to possess the ability. And this ability comes from God alone. That's why Paul called the, the attention of the church of Corinth where we have read and told them, I want you to look into the life of the Macedonian churches. There is another grace that they have that I want you to pay attention to. I know current church that you excel in love. You love people. You care for people. You attend service. You do everything necessary in the body of Christ. But there is a grace that you are overlooking. He said to them, look into the life of the Macedonian churches. He says there is a grace that they have received from God. There is an ability that they have received from God. No man can give without that grace. No man can help any man without that grace. No man can come to your rescue without that grace. No man can look into Christ's word ministry and begin to help where need arises without that grace. So the Lord was calling the attention of the Corinthian church through Paul and said, do not overlook this. There is a grace that still remains. There is a grace that you don't have access to. In us, remember, in as much as you excel in every other thing, we know you, you are a good Christian. We know you are fervent in prayer. We know you, you go for evangelism. We know you, you are church on time. We know you, you are out whenever we call. But there is a grace I need you to pay attention. And the thing I like about Apostle Paul is that he was not afraid to compare them. He said to them, look into the life of the Macedonian church. And brothers and sisters, I want you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian church. In my mind, I can imagine maybe they decided to reach out for the grace. And when they began to ask the Lord, I don't want the month of August to pass without me receiving the giving grace. And they reach out to the Lord. And God gave the Macedonian church the ability to give hallelujah no natural man born of a woman can give or have the ability to give without the grace the grace has to be there the strength has to be there the capacity has to be there if you doubt it when was the last time you went into any bookstore and the, and the book you are looking for <laughs> Is a book titled How to Give Effectively. When was the last time? No, okay, leave bookstore. Maybe some of you don't like going to bookstore. When was the last time you opened YouTube and you are asking, Lord, the topic I want to listen to today is grace for forgiving. No, grace for receiving. All of you will go and ask, Lord, what is the grace for receiving? If I shout now, you shall receive. Everybody will grab it. Amen. It's not particular to anybody. It's a grace. It's an ability. Hallelujah. It doesn't come natural to anybody. It comes as a grace that God has placed in the heart of a person. For the Macedonian churches, churches, they had it as a grace. In fact, the scripture made it clear. God himself was the one who gave them that grace. He put it in their heart. So you have not received the strength to give because the strength has not come upon you. Because the divine ability has not been transferred into you. Because you have not received it. For them they received it. Willingness to give. Without the grace to give we amount to nothing. That's true. That's why you have been procrastinating. You tell yourself, when I finish paying my bond, 
I don't know who God is talking to, but when I finish paying, paying my bond, then I will begin. When I finish paying the children's school fees, then I will begin to help the poor. When I finish, when I fi you know all those visions that you have. It is because the willingness to give without the grace amount to nothing. Every year you put it there in your, what is it called? Your goal for the year. Say, Lord, I will give you this. I will give this to the less privileged. I will remember my father. I will remember my mother. I will remember the brother in church. I will remember the sister. And when it's December, you discover there's nothing you have done. It is because the willingness to give without this grace and ability imparted to you, on you, we amount to nothing. Hallelujah. And this is what he told them. Look at what Apostle Paul was careful to note. Second Corinthians chapter 8, still verse 5. Let's read it together. And they exceeded our expectation. Hallelujah. Kai, what a group of church members. He says they exceeded our expectation. Why? They gave themselves first of all to the Lord. Can you see why they received the grace for giving? They gave themselves first to the Lord. They gave their mind first to the Lord. They gave their self first to the Lord. They gave their heart first to the Lord. They transferred their love first to the Lord. It begins with giving yourself first to the Lord. So God was telling the church of Corinth, the reason why you have not received the grace to give is because you have not given yourself first to the Lord. You excel in, in every area, but you have not given yourself first to the Lord. And he said to them, imitate the Macedonian churches. Because they were able to receive uh, of the grace to give from the Lord. Because they did what? They give themselves first to the Lord. It comes from giving yourself first to the Lord. From giving your life first to the Lord. From giving your family first to the Lord. From giving your time first to the Lord. It doesn't begin with my goal is that I will give so, so, so and so. I will help so, so, so and so. It first begin with giving yourself first to the Lord. As you come in with the Lord. As you relate with the Lord. As you love the Lord uh, with all your heart and with all your soul. A grace is transferred into your heart. And that grace has nothing to do with how much you have in your bank account. Because there are very rich people who are still as stingy as anything in the world. Because they have not received of the grace of giving. They gave themselves first to the Lord. They love the Lord. They are God with all their heart. That is what produced that amount of grace in them to the extent the apostle Paul was able to say they exceeded our expectation it's a grace that comes from your relationship with Christ it's a grace that comes from the amount of the love that you have in your heart it's a grace that is released and you do it joyfully the bible says uh, that we are poor that we are they went through afflictions, uh, but they we are joyful and they pleaded with us. Uh, how do we support the work of the Lord? It begins with your heart for the Lord. When the Pharisees went to Jesus and they were trying him and they asked him, Lord, what is the greatest? What is the first? What is the most important commandment? Jesus looked at them in Matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 39. He said the, to them, you shall love the Lord your God with your heart. With all your heart. Kind. The Bible is very perfect. It begins from the realm of heart. And that is the realm where nobody sees. 
as you are sitting down here, can I see your heart? Do you even know what is going on in mine? But there is somebody in heaven. So they gave their heart first to the Lord. They gave their love first to the Lord. So their giving was boiling out of personal love for the Lord. Hallelujah. Before you can take out something from you, your heart has to first belong to the Lord. Because it's not something that comes natural. It's not something that you can do by your strength, but by the grace of the Lord. And that is why it's called grace for giving. Praise the Lord. And Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest. Every other thing is secondary. It begins from your, the genuineness of the love that you have for your law, for your law, for your Lord. And I said the other time that it has to be an encounter, hallelujah, where you can stand before him and say, I'm not loving you because of anybody. I'm not pushed into this relationship because of anybody, but I'm in this relationship, Lord, because I love you with all of my heart and with all of my soul and with all of my spirit. And Jesus can see from above that this heart uh, really loves the Lord with all her heart. Then he imparts the grace. Then he gives you the divine enablement. Then he gives you the strength for giving. Hallelujah. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave. The grace must come from the point of love. For he so loved the world that he gave. That he so loved you and I that he gave. Hi! You have to draw the strength specifically from your love for God. Otherwise, the trials and temptations of the world will confuse you. Otherwise, the words and, 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 and the things said around on social media will confuse you. They will redirect you. The basics of the grace for giving is loving the Lord your God. And there is no man, no woman that you genuinely and authentically love that you don't give. Love gives you and releases the capacity to open up. It's not by power. It's not going to come by your bank account. It's not even going to come by how much you are paid end of the month. It will come by the grace of God. And that grace is coming upon us as a church. While I was preparing, I was telling the Lord, give us the grace. Impart in us the grace for giving. Let it become a culture. Let it become a culture that comes upon us, you know, as, as, as a lifestyle. Let it become a lifestyle in Christ's word ministries where it can be said we exceeded the expectation of our father. We exceeded the expectation of God. The question you should ask yourself this morning is, do I love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul? The grace made them to beg for the opportunity to give. Kai, somebody shout, I like the Macedonian churches. Did you read that? 2 Corinthians 8 verse 4 says, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. They were begging Paul, Paul, please don't deny us the privilege to share in the ability to give, in the ability to support, in the ability to be a blessing. Hallelujah. That can only come from grace. That grace only comes from the Lord himself. They owe they urgently pleaded. They didn't waste time. Paul, please. They pleaded with us for the privilege. They saw it as a privilege. Hallelujah. Giving is a privilege for the man that died on the cross of Calvary for you. For the man that gave all and exchange, he says, for you know the grace of God that he became poor that we may be rich. He left his throne and became like us that he may die for us. What else can a person give? 
They begged for the opportunity to give because they loved the Lord and gave themselves to him. When you love the Lord and you have given yourself to the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, you look for the opportunity to give. It's a grace that comes out of genuine love for the Lord. As our pastor said, that giving is living. But no man can give without the grace of God. And nobody can attest that grace without genuine love from the Lord. Because it is from that love that the grace is imparted into you. And the person that imparts this grace is Christ himself. Tell yourself, I received the grace for giving this morning. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites have brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. Which Who are the people who brought the offering? The, is, the Israelites. And what is the offering being used for the constructing, for the keeping, for the taking care, for the maintenance of the physical household of faith? He says, and the people continue to bring free will offering. Free will offering does not just come anyhow. It comes from a grace. Hallelujah. It comes from a man who has the grace of God. And he says they brought it morning by morning. And they said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work of the Lord commanded to be done. They brought so much that the workers could see this is overflowing. And they ran to the pastor and said, Pastor, ah, this work you gave to us, Christ's word members, they are bringing more and more and more. The thing is too much. And look at what Moses said to them. And Moses gave an order. And they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people, we are restrained from bringing more. Hey, hallelujah. I pray for Christ's word that we grow in our grace of giving to the point that when God has need, we will bring and bring and bring and bring until God can turn around and say, please stop bringing. Hallelujah. That's a level of grace. That's a level of grace. And men and women who love the Lord with all their heart and with all their mind are operating in that grace. And it had nothing to do with the amount of money they have. Nobody is too poor to give. If you doubt it, you are breathing in fresh air. Isn't it? You don't know that the plants are giving it to you. And you are receiving. And you are giving back to them. Life is giving. The grace to give. It comes from the Lord. Even the bread in your nursery. Is a gift. The Bible says he made man. And gave him the bread of life. The Bible says they gave. The Israelites gave. Until Moses was the one begging them. Don't continue. Hallelujah. And so that's the grace God is bringing you and I into this morning. Jesus wants Christ's word to excel in the grace of giving. Jesus wants Christ's word ministries. He wants his church to excel in the grace of giving. And that's why it is clear there. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7. But since you excel in everything in faith. But since you excel in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in the love we have kindled in you see that you also excel in the grace of giving hallelujah see that as a man that you excel in the grace of giving see that as a woman that you excel in the grace of giving see that as a youth that you excel in the grace of giving see Christ what men and women that we excel in the grace of giving of giving. We are perfect in every area but we need the grace of giving because it can only come when the Lord releases 
it upon us and it can only come when we open our heart and our mind to say to him, Lord, I love you. Not a lip service love, Lord, but I love you genuinely with all my heart and with all my mind and with all my soul and with all my spirit. I love you with everything in me. I love the walls of your church. Love my brothers and sisters. Hi, hallelujah. How many of you know that before you can begin to love your brothers and sisters, the first love must be in place. The question for you this morning is, where are you in your giving life? Where are you in your relationship with Christ? Because that is what determines that. Hallelujah. For some of us, you are giving out of the abundance of what you have. How about when God begins to, add, um, begins to ask for something that is above you? That is where the giving grace comes. The giving grace is not the grace that sustains you when you give only what you have. It says it's the grace that helps you to give. They give beyond the ability. They gave beyond the ability. It's not me. It is there in the world that I'm reading with you. They gave beyond their ability. They requested what are the opportunities in Christ's world? What are the opportunities in my household of faith? Where can I begin to help? What burden can I lift from my church family? Can we be on our feet this morning? Praise the Lord. The grace for giving is not dictated by ability. It has nothing to do with being well off. It is willing. It views giving as a privilege. It is joyful. Hallelujah. And that's the grace that is coming upon us.